You see, most anglers flock to the state for ravenous redfish in the saltwater marshes, or if you're a bass angler, you probably might find yourself in a maze of cypress trees, flipping roots for largemouth bass. But we're here for an entirely different goal. Our mission over the next few days is to highlight a far less explored fishing scene that lies right here in some of Louisiana's major urban scapes. Whether we're casting for speckled trout and redfish under the I-11 bridge, or canal hopping for prehistoric river monsters, we will be exploring any unique opportunity that Louisiana has to offer. Let's roll. We've discovered a nice little city pond, not too far from where we got the intro kicked off. I'm bringing two rods with me, one of which is a rat and the other light spinning. This is all uncharted territory for myself. I've never fished Reefport before. I really haven't fished freshwater in Louisiana, period. Usually when I come down here, we're on the coast and Hopedale, Delacroix, Delacroix, I guess some people call it, uh, chasing redfish, but this is completely out of my comfort zone. I'm an urban angler, I like doing this, but this is totally new for me, so I'm excited to explore some, some new fisheries today. What is that? Is it a bass? Oh, oh no, it's a bass. He's just not looking too good. He just ate it. Good one. Good one. Good one. Good bass. Good bass. Come here. Get him in. Let's go. Let's go, dude. No way. Oh my gosh. The only reason why I could see this fish in the water so clearly is because he had like some scars on his head. First bass of Casting Concrete, Louisiana. And it's not a bad one. We're in a little city park right now, completely public, doing a bit of shallow water fishing. And uh, that is a good start. It's gonna be tough, not only because we haven't fished here before, but because these places generally see a lot of activity. While they don't get fished as much as they probably should, um, they still get fished and these bass are definitely pressured. That is a amazing start to our Shreveport stop here on Louisiana Casting Concrete. Beautiful bass. Back she goes. Come on, old girl, you got this. Awesome. <laughs> Put it there, Caleb. Nice first bass. That was our first bite of the day. A nice two pound largemouth. Just cruising the bank, probably looking for shallow bluegill or any sort of bait. He saw that four inch Guggenlunker log and just could not resist. That is so much fun. Sight fishing, fun. Sight fishing and a tiny pressured urban pond. Multiply that by two. So epic. Let's keep cranking. Hey! What's up? Watch your video. Oh, nice, man. That's awesome. What's your name? Charlie. Nice to meet you, Charlie. Have a good one, bro. Thank you. Take care. See ya. Hey, have you gone all the way down there? Uh, yeah, not all all the way down, but like the, the second to last section. Yeah, I catch all my fish all the way down there. Really? Yeah. We might try. I'm going to peep this and then head on down there. Awesome. Thank you, bro. Carp spawning. Oh my gosh. They're going crazy over there. The carp are going crazy. Oh, they are getting feisty. Oh yeah, dude, we need to come back here with bread. Look at that one eating. Yeah, we need to come back here with bread. There's a supermarket down the way. Bread, corn. Let's go get some carp. I'm gonna chump some carp up. There's a couple different ways you can catch carp. You either catch them on the bottom, or some may not know this, but you can actually topwater fish for carp. And topwater fishing is my favorite. I think it was the last episode of the Florida casting concrete that we filmed, we managed to actually catch a pretty nice 
grass carp. It was actually one of my favorite moments just because it like was a spot right outside of the holiday and we were staying at. I just am not 100% sure if they're gonna be feeding right now. We did see one come up, but I don't know. It's not looking too good. Let's go over maybe a little bit farther down see if we can get them jumped up. <sighs> just a quick break. All right, we're good. That's a big gar. Oh my God, there he is. Oh, he's looking at my worm. Oh boy, that's a good fish. Oh, he's like under the tree, dude. I see him right there. Might be able to get a shot of him. Oh, he just nipped it. He just nipped it. He's got it. Got him, got him, got him. That was insane, dude. That was insane. Listen to my drag. Come here, oh, come here, come here, come here. Oh, come here. That was insane. Oh, <laughs> I don't think I've ever caught a bass like that. This fish was in one of the most difficult spots I've ever had to catch. And we're going to get a quick look and send him back. I'm pretty sure she was on a bed. We don't want to keep these fish out of the water too long, especially if they're guarding fry or eggs. Such a sick bass though. Wow. Okay, I'm going to put him back and tell you guys how that went down. His bed is right there, I believe. So we're just going to send him back. All right, go get him, girl. I was over here watching like a lot of movement under this limb as I was working like a little one pounder on a bed. And uh, I'm like, what is that? Like, are they spawning bluegill or whatever? Sure enough, I looked between the limbs and I saw this like blob, like a pretty good fish. I actually thought he was a little bit bigger than that. Still a solid bass. And he was chasing little minnows and, and bluegill off presumably a bed. And what I did is I just took my little tiny slim shake, which is an, also an awesome sight fishing shallow water worm for this time of year. It has a much slower rate of fall than the lunker log. And we just got it wacky wormed, very similar to how we were fishing earlier and it just kind of fluttered in front of his face. He rushed over to it, towards it, grabbed the whole freaking worm in his mouth and ran off. I set the hook with about literally like that much line, like not even 12 inches, probably 12 inches on the dot. That was a weird fish catch in, in a weird setting too. Like I can't believe how fired up that fish was. It's a pretty good start though. Two, two pounders in an area where you've got busy traffic and quacking Mojave ducks and turtles and trash. It's a nice little pond though. Let's keep crushing, put it there, Caleb. Bing bong. If you're coming to Louisiana, no matter what city you're passing through, you cannot go wrong with Cajun. We're at actually one of my favorite little joints that we've eaten in the past, and they've got pretty good seafood, pretty good Cajun. Some of my favorite food too, like Cajun hands down is my favorite. I love seafood, I love fresh shrimp, caught straight from the Gulf. This is a good starting point. I'm excited to bring you guys along with not only to some of these fishing destinations, but some of these food destinations, because the food in the city really says a lot about what the place is like, and uh, Shreveport's definitely got a good one. Yes. Some boudin. We got boudin, spicy crackers, boiled shrimp, half pound, and of course, of course, some gumbo, some gumbo and rice. Caleb, what'd you get? You got like, and it's like Cajun seafood, mac and cheese. Everything has been good so far. This is a good start. I think we're gonna get some good food as we progress, but. Uh, it's a good foundation for our, the meal side of casting concrete. Got some fish, now time to grub up. Cheers. There he is, there he is, there he is, there he is, there he is. There he is. See him? Here we go. I'm gonna see if I can get him fed up on bread. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, dude. This is going down. This is crazy, dude. We just pulled off on this like little roadside ditch. It looks like a retention pond. There's looks like there's yeah, there's something, there's tons of stuff in here. Looks like there's like two carp or koi, I don't know what they are, but they're feeding. Bass, you think? Hang on, here we go. Oh my God, these bluegill are being such cock blocks. If only the freaking bluegill were, oh, here we go. Got him, got him, got him. That's so crazy, that is so crazy. I have no idea what this is. It looks like some sort of koi or whatever. What 
did we just catch? <laughs> that was so dirty. Take a look at this little creature. Oh my God, it's gonna, oh, come here. I got you, I got you. Take a look at that little specimen. I don't know if somebody came in here and decided to drop like goldfish in this retention pond, but we were driving over to grab some, some light action gear for potentially a panfish mission. And Caleb and I spotted this little tiny ditch with bluegill in it. I threw a couple pieces of bread in and then these carp or goldfish, whatever they are, decided to basically emerge. Such an interesting fish. You can literally hear the motorcycles and cars whizzing past us. New species for the Shreveport stop. Get back down there, buddy. Oh, there he goes, just spit up the bread. <laughs> I'm really curious to what that thing is. It doesn't look like a carp. He looks a little golden and it could be a crossbreed between the two, a carp and a goldfish. Sometimes it happens in these urban spots, these urban puddles and retention ponds. People have a goldfish, they can't take care of it, so they dump it in public waterways. It's not legal, but it happens and it makes for very unique fishing opportunities where you can just pull over on the side of the road, take a piece of bread that you purchased at a grocery store moments ago and make a cast on a fish that you know, most people wouldn't normally even attempt to. That was kind of fun on the ultralight stick. Not a very big fish, uh, but we did manage to catch something a little bit different other than a bass today. That was so freaking cool. There's two more over here. I want to see if these guys are. They're actually really hard to get to eat. They're eating the, the bread seamlessly without the hook, but with the, with the hook on, they were acting a little smart. This guy's still down there grubbing super hard. I wonder if he'll pick it up. Oh my gosh. Of course, the, oh, I caught the bluegill. I got a bluegill. <laughs> no way. What the hell is that? Oh, it's a little green sunfish, I believe. Another new species. I wasn't even after him. I threw in front of where that carp was feeding, and this guy ate it. Species number three for Shreveport. That is so dope. I'm just gonna toss him back. There he goes. It's so funny, man. Everything loves bread. Everything. Oh, here we go, Caleb. Ready? I'm about to smoke this guy. He just ate two pieces of bread on top. I'm about to light this guy up. Got him. That was so insane. That was so insane. Oh, this one's fighting way harder. This one's fighting way harder. <laughs> this one looks more like a carp. Come here. Come here, buddy. Come here. Got really light line. That is so insane that we stumbled upon this random little spot with tiny carp and koi in them. Ooh, he's pissed. He's pissed. What a unique little freaking spot this is. I cannot believe we found something like this. Come here. There he goes. Back in the water. Thank you for playing. Not much of a fight, but it is interesting being able to like f pitch and flip bread to, to carp and have them literally chase it never seen that kind of behavior in, in carp before. Very weird. Normally when you see stuff like this, you drive right past, you don't even bother fishing it, but seeing as the theme and the mentality that we're, we're trying to keep throughout this whole journey is like fish anything, fish everything. If there's water, explore it, investigate it. Most of the time when we pull up something like this, it's dead, there's nothing. But the water looked clean, there was grass. And when I came down here and threw bread for the bluegill, they were coming up and that's what got these strange looking hybrid carp to also rise the surface. So. We had to take full advantage of it. That was very fun. Well, we took a little pit stop after catching those carp out of that literal puddle to go grab some fly fishing gear. Now, normally I just pack my own fly fishing gear, but all my fly rods are broken because I'm a clumsy idiot and I may have been trying to catch carp or catfish on a fly. Anyway, it's a long time ago. We picked up some gear. We actually met a few of you guys. I ran into like maybe what was it killed like six different viewers all super nice genuine human beings gave us some spots and some locations we're actually back at where we started trying to make things a little bit interesting here picked up a little three weight and we're gonna see if we can catch some bluegill maybe even a bass on the fly rod this whole trip is about being diverse not just focusing on bass I know that's where my heart lies but like we're gonna stop off and fish you know saltwater canals or anything that looks good, we're going to pull the truck over, put the hazards on and check it out. That's what casting concrete is truly all about. Yeah, there might be some places. Oh, there we go. Got one. 
got one finally. What is this? Oh, a crappie. No way. <laughs> a new species to add to the list. Not the intended target. I was hoping to come down here and catch some little bluegill. And we caught ourselves a micro little black crappie on the fly. Actually, it might be my first ever crappie on the fly. You can hear the swing sets behind us right now. We are in it. That is so crazy. Didn't even think there'd be crappie in here. Nice gentle release for a little crappie, buddy. Very unexpected surprise. There he goes. <laughs> That's awesome. Never knew. Never knew. On the freaking fly, too. That's so funny. I wonder if there's some big ones in here. When we were here in the morning, the bank was littered full of bluegill. Some were spawning, some were eating. Now they're back over here. I'm not seeing much of anything. Seeing a lot of little bluegill, but they're too small to even take the smallest fly I have. I was thinking, too, we could maybe get a gar as well, and the gar have peeled off. Really not seeing much of anything. We got a long drive ahead of us, too. A 200 mile drive after this, so we can't spend too, too much time here. We are back on the road headed towards Baton Rouge right now. I decided to take the back roads. And all along this route we're taking are miles and miles of what I originally thought were ponds, but after a further inspection, these are crawfish farms. This is crazy to think that the crawfish that we get at restaurants all throughout the United States probably come from these little tiny square man-made ditches full of water. To think that there's probably hundreds of thousands of tasty craws just chilling in these waterways is nuts. We uh, cut our Shreveport trip short, had to hit the road. We had a three hour drive to Baton Rouge, we're still an hour away. It was sad to leave Shreveport. I actually had a pretty large misunderstanding for that place. The fishing was pretty good. Love to come back to Shreveport, but we're still on the roll. We've got, we've got literally four days to fish three major cities. And it was an experience to say the least. But I figured we'd take a moment, a nice breather, pull off to the side of the road, throw the hazards on, and just gander at just this gloriousness of probably one of the tastiest crustaceans out there. Little tiny lobsters, man. Louisiana backcountry is just, is so cool. I'm glad we took this route. Well, we've made it to our next destination. We are in a brand new city. I don't know if I mentioned it prior, but if if I didn't, we'll keep it a secret as to where we are at right now. This is uh, hopefully gonna be a little bit more of a fishier stop as we pulled in through here, looking on Google Maps and just seeing what's around. There's definitely more water. We're not quite at the coast yet, so salt water's not a factor for tomorrow's urban Louisiana fishing session, but we've got some ponds, some bayous, some canals, some creeks within a stone's throw of where we're staying. By the way, not that it's related to the video, but uh, this is a super nice room. Like we are staying in a beautiful room. This room costs as much as our room in Shreveport, Louisiana, for whatever reason, like a hundred fifty dollar room doesn't go that far in Shreveport, but here where we're at, in my opinion, a little bit better destination, it goes quite a ways, but yeah, we're going to get some rest. It's 10. We just got off the road, drove a cool, almost four hours to get here. Although I'm absolutely exhausted. I am anxious to get after tomorrow, just observing some of the adjacent little waterways, urban little fisheries that are surrounding our, our hotel. I think I think tomorrow's episode is gonna be hopefully a little bit more dynamic and nuclear. Not to say today wasn't, but we really only had a half day to fish and we were kind of limited as to what we could potentially target. I mean, it was mostly bass, gar, bluegill, that catch a crappie, which is pretty wild. But I think down here where we're at in this city, we'll be able to expand our horizon as to what we chase after. But I'm bidding for all you beautiful wieners out there. Uh, we're gonna get some good night's rest and get ready for tomorrow's urban fishing session, bright and breezy in the morning. We'll see you then. I don't quite like that uh, free hotel breakfast in the morning to get things going. Powdered eggs, stale sausage. I was concerned this place in Louisiana didn't have hot sauce. But it seems we're on brand this morning. It's my, actually my favorite hot sauce. Louisiana Crystal. So good. People like Tallulah. Yeah, it's okay. People like Tabasco. I don't know why. But Louisiana Crystal over some eggs and sausage. Money. You know, I was thinking about this late last night when we pulled into this new destination here in uh, basically South Louisiana. I was thinking to myself, like, why do I like doing this so much? Why do I like going to these cities and fishing? Like, I've got the opportunity to go just about all over the world in what a line, but 
for whatever reason, we, we keep this casting concrete kind of a series on this channel. And I think one of the main reasons why is this is where my, where my beginning started. Like every day after school, hop on my bike, grab my rod, head down to the three little ponds that were in my residential area in suburban Illinois, and I'd fish my guts out. I'd fish till dark. Sometimes I might have fibbed my parents and said that I was done with my homework just so I could get out in the water and try to catch a fish. And most days I wouldn't get anything but a bite, but it was the experience. It was like just the idea of going and fishing these little tiny ponds that were encompassed in townhomes and small houses and just pulling fish out. My bass boat was my five-speed bike and the free time that I had was only a few hours that I could spend uh, on, a, on an afternoon after school. So I think that's why I like doing this so much and that's why I'm so excited about today is because where we are at is very much rich in water. This is great, we're bringing two rods today. I got a spinning and I got a casting. The casting has got the old rat. I am dedicated to catch a fish on a rat or a mouse in the urban setting. What also is beautiful about this too is we get to leave the truck and trailer right at the hotel and walk over to where we'll be fishing today. Baton Rouge is a place that, kind of like Shreveport, I'm driving through. I'm not stopping to fish here, but around here, it seems like there's a good amount of water. There's two giant lakes amongst bayous and a couple creeks and some tiny ponds, and we're hoping to explore all of it. Oh yeah, what's that over there? Nervous water. For whatever reason, a lot of these, uh, a lot of these like, Louisiana cities have like these things called bayou. I don't know if it's a southern thing, but like I would call this a creek back home. But down here in Louisiana, it's a bayou. So we're fishing this little bayou right now to get started. There's some good shade in here, and I think this would be a perfect opportunity, if there is bass in here, to get a nice bite on the rat. But I just got throttled. Oh, 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 bass. Bass is eating little tiny bait way up shallow. They just, they just drop it. There we go. Oh, it just came off. <laughs> that was so sick. First bite of the day. Make things a little bit more interesting. I'm seeing a lot of tiny bait fish right right up against the bank and with that i'm gonna throw something that imitates said bait fish or a little tiny bull shad something a little more aggressive to get them fired up and anxious a lot of movement over here Ooh, something big just spooked off the bank Yeah, the convenience thing would be pretty nuts. Oh! My frog's still there. What was that? It looked like it was way more aggressive than a gar. Yeah, it's a gar, see it's up under. Oh, uh, yeah. Damn, I just got broken off. There's my frog. Dude, gar just, they can mutilate braid. So that's 65 pound braid that gar just snapped like butter. Probably like a 66 pound guard probably. Yeah, it had to have been a 66 pound guard. Now I gotta get my frog back. Thankfully he let go of it. I don't know how I'm gonna get that frog, cause it's like, so no, but I like to get it. Good thing it broke off. Yeah. Cause if you didn't, it would smoke the truck behind you. Oh yeah. <laughs> I know, I, I heard the truck behind me. I'm like, I heard the, no, didn't want to turn around. I was like, no. Nope. Well, if you want a game used filthy frog, it's here on Campus Lake. Shout out to that gar for snapping me off. I can't like get the frog back too because it's not like a troubled bait, like a spook that floats. I can't like snag it with my line. So that's just gonna be there for eternity. It's, I'm just literally watching it float right in front of me. Man, picking up shop, very deceiving. I, I started off this morning with high hopes just due to the concentration of water on here. Like everywhere you look, there's little tiny nooks and crannies where there should be bass and you fish two ponds in a bayou with no luck. So we're gonna see if we can bring the fight to them. I'm hopping on the boat, hopefully. There's a boat ramp, actually, what looks like a boat ramp down here at one of the bigger lakes that's on campus here at LSU. I'm thinking that maybe we'll be able to drop the boat in and see if we can get some fish from the boat. We've, but we've done like hardly any boat fishing this trip. And I think now's the time to actually hop on the water, see if we can make it happen. Well, the good news is we're on the water. The bad news, there's not that much of it. I think I failed to mention this at the beginning of today's video, but we are smack dab in the middle of LSU's campus. Go Tigers. I've noticed that everything that we fished today, that is two ponds and a couple of creeks, there hasn't been that much life 
swimming around. And that's one of the reasons why we've dropped the boat in and a lake that you can actually fish from a boat on campus. Unfortunately, it's the whole lake, it seems like it's one foot. It's very deceiving too, because I saw this pond. I'm like, oh, well, if we get the boat on here, we could definitely get some, get some fish for sure. Like being on a boat obviously is an advantage in some sorts, but this whole lake, I mean, it's not even a pond, it's a lake. It's like a foot deep. I can't even use my big motor right now. If the, oh my God, what the something. What the f is that? It's like a concrete wall right in front of us. Dude, this is weird. I'm so glad I'm looking down right now because I would literally just rip my patrol motor straight off. Oh, yep, that's it right there. <sighs> Concrete. Thank God for live scope because out in the middle of this lake, check this out, this is crazy. So right here, you've just got straight mud. It's like two feet of water. But then you go like an inch further. Did you hear that? That is like a piece of concrete, like a concrete pipe. That would have ripped my, ripped my skeg off, would have ripped my troll motor off. I noticed it on the graph, I was like, well, we're not getting over that. Oh, man, rough start to urban fishing in Baton Rouge, man. Look at that, you can see on the graph, it's just like a wall. That will, <laughs> that's a day ender right there. Well, we're gonna get out of this, this absolute mud hole, and that is, that says a lot coming from a guy who's been fishing mud holes. This is a mud hole. We're gonna get out of here, see if we can maybe launch in that other lake. That other lake looks cleaner, it's got grass. And from a general standpoint, that's kind of speaking to me from like a bass angler standpoint. Are we rolling? Do we have to be? Just kidding. I gotta keep a positive mental attitude. Positive, the urban fishing is not supposed to be easy, clearly. I'm also not the best thing. So, now it's time to put it in, uh, in, in third gear and just disappear, just <laughs> I know I promised that we're gonna keep it Cajun throughout this whole trip, wherever we eat, but there's a, a special fast food joint that's probably one of my favorite, that is home here in Baton Rouge. That is Raising Cane's. Also, fun fact, Raising Cane is named after a Labrador retriever. The owner, when they first built this place, had a lab and its name was Raising Cane and it would hang around the shop when it was getting constructed. So while it's not necessarily on par with Cajun in Southern Louisiana cuisine, we have to stop off of the OG in Baton Rouge and get ourselves some, uh, some chicken fingies. guy oh my gosh that took a long time come here bud <laughs> to say it's been a grind is an understatement it's 5 p.m. we've jumped around to so many different little puddles and urban honey holes and this is our first fish of the day a little dinky Louisiana largemouth Caleb's shaking his head as am I it's tough man because it's like we're not only out here fishing okay. see you later bud it's difficult because we're not only how you're fishing, but we're filming for you guys and we want to make it as interesting as we possibly can. Now it's not all about catching, it's all about the experience, uh, but it would be nice to prove to you guys and show you why we're here. And that is for the fishing, for the culture, for the food. And we've done everything but the fishing part, the catching part, I should say. So first fish, we still have like maybe two and a half hours of daylight left, so we're not giving up. There could be just a, a huge bright light at the end of the tunnel. But it's been very difficult. Baton Rouge has kicked our ass. A little bit deeper over here. This looks really crazy. Oh, I just got hit. Little guy. It is a fish though. It is a fish. Let's go. <laughs> Louisiana sun is setting on us. We're still trying our best to make it happen. Fish number two of the day on a little lunker log. This is a cool little lake. It seems like it'd be very natural and it's kind of quiet over here, but it's really, really not that far from I-10 where we have been traveling most of this trip. Just a little squeaky fish, but much, 
Much appreciated on a tough day like today. And now to send little buddy back. See you, dude. Thank you for thank you for participating. I appreciate that. I'm looking at the bottom right now and I can see pretty much like four feet down. It's really clean water and there's a lot of old beds. I imagine these fish are pretty far into post spawn, but that usually means they're pretty aggressive and hungry. Imagine we'll find a couple more. It, feels, it just feels good to get fit, wieners. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, a whole school of them. There we go, another little guy. <laughs> oh, he just spit it. Dude, there was a whole school of them following the worm in. That was nuts. Yeah, there's one. Little. It must be so freaking little. Well, oh, that was a little bit better. A little bit better, maybe. Oh, he's got me in the grass. There he goes. <laughs> a little large mouth. This is hilarious, dude. This is hilarious. I'm legitimately getting bit every single cast. There's a lot of fish in here, but I think they're just really tiny. Dinky squad. Hey man, I'll freaking take it on a day like today. Whew, it's been nothing short of a challenge. They're itty, bro. They're all so itty in here. <laughs> oh, at least we're catching up on some numbers. I wonder if they just stocked this place or I don't know, maybe they're just really stunted. They're really pretty though, like beautiful, perfect fish. Wow, so cool. See ya. They for sure spawn though. I mean, they're they're definitely old enough to and big enough to spawn. Or at least some of them are because I'm seeing a bunch of empty beds. Couple. Couple. Ah, uh, just little worms. How about yourself? You getting any? Yeah, I got about 15, 16. Nice man. Any size? No. Just little. Tinies, yeah. There must not be too many fishing options around here if this guy's been fishing here since he was seven and he knows it's like full of things. Oh, oh. There we go. Dude, that is so much fun. Oh, it's a little bit better. <laughs> it is a little bit better. On the four inch lunker log. That is so sick, dude. Oh, I'm such a happy per Dude, I'm such a happy angler right now. Finally got on some fish, dude. Finally, finally. This is definitely the most we've caught in both days compared. It's definitely it's obviously been not the easiest, but at least we're catching some fish, dude. Look at that green little Louisiana bass. <laughs> That's awesome, dude. Let's go. Look how clean that water is, my gosh. Urban fishing to me is not only about trying to find interesting spots within city limits to try to catch fish, but it's about finding the most unique area that we could possibly get ourselves into. Although I like trying to explore new areas, there's one spot in mind that we've attempted to fish in the past, which in my opinion is the crown jewel of urban fishing. It lies just on the outskirts of New Orleans. We finally made it to the southernmost major city here in Louisiana, and we are about to link up with a dude named Austin who goes by that kayak dude on Instagram. But what we plan to attempt to fish, keyword attempt, is unarguably one of the craziest urban spots there is, period. Wow. Trail cam right there. Yep. I wonder if they got me already. Oh yeah, they're wide. <laughs> so for those of you who watched a video that we filmed, quite some time ago, you might guess what we're doing right now. Austin hit me up after we posted this video of attempting to fish the abandoned Six Flags here in New Orleans. Katrina devastated a lot of businesses, a lot of homes, and just the city of New Orleans in general. And one thing it took with it is the Six Flags that was once here, what, 2008? It used to be Jazzland, now turned into Six Flags, and then basically this was underwater. But there's lakes and ponds within this abandoned Six Flags. It's like an apocalyptic scene from a movie. And uh, Austin hit me up after we posted that video and he's like, hey man, if you're ever back down, let's go do it. We just happened to be filming Casting Conquer. I'm like, this would be an awesome addition to the series. So we're actually in right now. Chances are we might get kicked out, but we at least have to give it an attempt. Um, don't condone any of these activities, obviously, but we have to fish. To say we caught a fish in the abandoned Six Flags New Orleans would be insane. Oh, dude. 
Rookie. You <laughs> rookie. <laughs> oh, there we go. There we go. No, you it felt little. You good killed? I hit you. Look, yeah, that's what it felt like. There's, there he is. There we go. There we go. Oh, dude, I was like, what is that? That's a bass, bro. Look how dark that thing is. I don't know if you realize this, but you just made a dream come true. <laughs> yeah. It was like two years ago, I found out there was water in an abandoned museum park on the outskirts of New Orleans. And ever since then, I made it a gold mine to not only fish, but catch a fish out. Huge shout out to Austin for being our guide today, essentially, and showing us back here. He's been fishing his whole life here in Louisiana. And uh, yeah, this is crazy, man. Freaking bass. I know it may not seem like we're in uh, Six Flags right now, but literally right behind those trees, we'll throw the drone up later, but right behind those trees is an apocalyptic scene from a zombie movie, and it's just overgrown rides, and what essentially is just something that is lost in time. And within here are little bass, alligators, crappie, bluegill, just life has taken over this place. I normally go for a nice soft release, but there's probably a good 15 feet of ice, and so we're gonna let this homie fly just so you can get back in the water. And if that bothers you, we'll show you a video how they stock trout in Montana. They literally drop them from airplanes. So yeah, he's all good, man. He's chilling. He's just <laughs> he's just wondering why he got pulled from his little highest and home. That's so cool, dude. First fish of the day on a little blazing worm. Nothing like it. If you got stuff like this, stuff like throw a blazing worm, throw a filthy frog. This is the juice. Right here. Whoa. Well, this is the closest that we've ever gotten. I mean, we're in it right now, dude. Last time, if you all saw the video, we were on the other side of the park, barely even in it, not even for real in it. Oh, there's one, a little bluegill or something. We were barely even in it. And as soon as we got to the gate to kind of explore a little further, we got, we got booted, which is so funny because when we came in here, the dude that probably kicked us out expected us to probably be here to venture in and explore the rides and do some whack crazy stuff but we were here to fish and he was kind of confused he's like he's like he's like y'all fishing like he didn't believe it like he thought we were just using that as a ploy makes it kind of challenging to fish this stuff mainly because what austin was saying is like this whole pond is encased in what is called like hyacin it's more of like a southern thing we i think there's some ponds or lakes in texas that have it but it just chokes out the edge of ponds and there's fish probably living right under this like there's a good like two to three feet of water underneath these hyacins a big swing ride. Oh, they're like all the swings that spin around in a circle. Would it just get washed away? I, get, I, I think they probably took it down and sold it to somebody or yeah. something, maybe. So it was like a, it was like a, uh, what do they call it? Not a carousel, right? No, it's, it's like, like it's got you know the chain swings yeah. that are like all behind each yeah. other. I don't know what they call it. It's just gone. <laughs> yeah, when I was little, I, I was riding it and I, one of my shoes flew off into the pond. <laughs> Never got it back. <laughs> Went the rest of the day with no shoes. That's so funny, man. <laughs> So you were, you, you were here when it was up and running. Yeah. No way. No freaking way. I can't explain to you guys how amazing it is to not only be here, but then to like fish it. Like we are so heavily pushing the envelope. Of course, we're not the first people to fish here, but it just, it's cool to, to be one of those people and experience this because I just am so intrigued in, in exploring and fishing areas we're not supposed to, like quite literally not supposed to. Oh, no way. Man, there's like little hidden Easter eggs all throughout here. Obviously, it's like basically a amusement park lost in time. And there's, Caleb pointed out, there's like the giant bears that you win in like the, the dark games or like the milk bottle games. <laughs> Look, he's got one. <laughs> That's actually pretty good shape. This is like where like the uh, logs would come down and you'd splash in the water. Yeah. Oh yeah, that too. So I wonder why they took one out and then left the other. Yeah. Thank you. Big dial guy. Yeah. The tools are the tools are nice. 
Oh, there we go. Oh, my. He just barely sucked it down. Just got throttled and didn't set the hook in time. Like an absolute dork. It was a very small yeah, I thought it was a bluegill just tapping at it, but it was just a super light open water bite. See one right there? Oh, yeah. All right. It's about as finesse as I can get. Yeah. You a fake? There we go. Well, you're right, Caleb. You said to switch. <laughs> we officially did it, boys. We caught a fish like within the park. We got the carousel right behind me. Nice large mouth bass. Just had literally, Caleb's like, dude, just throw the lunker log. Just throw the lunker log. Just throw the worm. Sure enough, first cast down the hatch. Dude, put it there, awesome man. This is so cool, dude. Thank you for, uh, yes, sir. for helping us out and, and making this happen. This is nuts. Beautiful fish, man. It just blows my mind that like, like there's just amazing bass in here. Like there's probably some, I mean, you said what, 10 pounder one, at one point in time was pulled out, pulled out of here? Yeah. That is crazy. There he goes. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, I'm I am They haven't started biting me yet. They are piled up right there. Yeah, I was literally sitting there talking with the fish in my hand. <laughs> yeah. Not even realized I was getting absolutely mutilated. There we go. Another one. Little guy. Man, they fight hard in here. This is a 7'6 rod and they pull. Look at him flaring skills like he's a perch or something. Fish number three. Look at that. So dope. See, little guy, get, get you back in there. Peace. Oh, oh man, <laughs> on a bed, Lock. <clears throat> yeah. Lay down. We can go back. We can push that little area over there with the one. Yeah, I don't think it's smart. Definitely want to go closer. Dude, we were just in the zone casting and the car just drove right past us and did not see us. We're in the middle, like you should be able to see us, no problem. Well, we're headed out. Mission, success there at the end. It, uh, it almost took a turn for the worse. I'm like just aimlessly fishing. We're kind of on like a little man-made point there, taking some casts in the highest end. And I just watched this hoopty roll by, which was the security. And I mean, like I, I can see him clear as day. He mustn't have been looking forward, but he just drove right past us. We're cool, we're clean. Respectful, didn't take anything, didn't leave anything. Just caught a couple bass and put them back. Literally a dream come true, man. That was so cool. I think we caught like three bass. Again, huge shout out to Austin for showing us the ropes. Louisiana is a huge city. What are the odds you drive over the I-11 bridge and you see your buddy going 40 miles an hour right alongside your truck? Uh, that's Ty Hibbs. He's one of the guys that I can thank for basically my, my love of red fishing. And uh, Ty's actually out there fishing. He's friends with Austin, who of course we just met today in person. He's gonna link up with us, probably grab a bite, and then we might hop on Ty's boat, or at least fish with Ty. Well, we are getting after it. Just crushed an absolute amazing and much needed meal. We are now on Ty's boat. I keep forgetting that, you know, with there being so much water on you, you've got ponds, you've got bayous, you've got lots of little creeks, which we've fished in the past, but there's a huge lake. What's crazy about this lake, Pontchartrain, is it sits right above New Orleans. And in this lake, everything from alligator gar, occasionally tarpon, jacks, redfish, speckled trout, largemouth bass, uh, crappie or sock, you guys call them sockelade, sockelade down here. This is probably, not only is it an awesome urban fishing spot, but it is unarguably probably the most diverse fishing spots in general. Here, 
at the bridge. This is nuts, man. This is freaking crazy. We're literally casting at concrete right now. Even just driving over Route 11, just looking down, you see so many boats, people posted up fishing for speckled trout. Great fish, fun fish to catch. I don't even, like, they're so unique. If you've never seen them before, hopefully you get a chance here in a little bit, but like, they're absolutely nuts. For example, that is a good one. We're about to see one right now. Look at that, man. All right, so this is just a little, little standard dart tag we have right here. This is Matrix Shad tag, so my buddy Shad Champagne right there. It's got a little individual number on each one. And uh, we're just gonna, this is a nice little trout. It's probably 16, 17 inch or so. This is what you catch a lot this time of year. Fat male right there. We're just gonna take a, clear out a little spot of scales. Put it right there along the backbone. Run it down. Give it a little tug, make sure it's good. And we're gonna hurry up and get them back. Thank you, fish. There we go. There we go. Well, that was a nice little bite, man. They are so much fun. It's been a minute since I've actually even chased after trout. Look at this guy, dude. Oh, it's a flounder. That's awesome. Flounder. <laughs> Never mind, not a trout. That's cool, dude. Oh, he's gone. Dang it, dude. Hey, man, it's diversity. I don't even think we mentioned that there's flounder here, too. Oh, also, what you got there? That's a good trout. It's almost a decent fish. You know that? You got him? Got him. Good, wow. healthy female. Look at their little teeth, too. They got tiny little bits. Oh, dude, they jump? That's decent, a little guy. I think an airborne, yeah, a little jumper. There we go, man. First one of the trip. It's cool to switch it up, do some saltwater fish. I'm sure a lot of you guys would like to see some diversity, and that is that is what we're doing, man. We're switching it up. Look how cool that fish is, man. They look nothing like trout, but that's what we call them. Sea trout, speckled trout. That is so cool you tag them, man. Yeah. There he goes. Hopefully somebody catches that and lets us know where it was. The last time I fished with Ty, we were after redfish. It was super cold. We weren't filming any sort of urban stuff. We were down south and uh, we actually tagged quite a few of the redfish. Caught some giant reds, but it's neat to see some speckled trout get tagged. This is all we're using. It's a seven foot guggenrod, some 20 pound braid, some actually a little too light fluorocarbon and swim baits. This is literally the kind of stuff that we fish back home and we're doing it in Lake Pontchartrain, which is north of New Orleans. Man, I haven't, I've never done this before. Whenever I come to Louisiana, occasionally we'll catch speckled trout, but it's on axe and redfish and so. I'm just like, let me just let me keep my group a little bit. Tyler's over here just showing me how it's done. It's a good fish. Some of the bigger speckled trout I think I've ever seen, in person at least. There we go. On the way up. That's a decent one. It's killed talking all that bro. I gotta I gotta go on. Yeah, it's a, oh it's another flounder. What the hell? No, I am working it too slow apparently because I'm getting flounder. <laughs> That's cool, dude. Another species to add to the list. Hey, look at that thing. That's so cool, bro. I don't know how to hold them, but I guess just like like a plate. That right there is a flounder. Absolutely choked it too. I'm gonna send it back. Oh, he just floats to the bottom. There's everything here. You think that bass live in here too? Freaking crappie. Sorry, soccolate. They all live in here, man. They all freaking live in here. It's too cool, dude. Well, it's apparent I'm working too slow because I'm, I'm getting all these bottom fish. I need to speed it up a little bit, I suppose. Yeah, they have to camp down there still. Oh, there you go. A little bite. Oh, decent one. Look how dark that one is. My God. So cool, bro. So cool. Might be one of my new favorites, dude. Just the way you fish for it is just so cool. You got some like chartreuse in their lips, too. Mm -hmm. It's pretty neat. Yeah, a lot of people like around here, they like the old, the old guys call them yellow mouse. Yellow mouse, yeah. Oh, he got a few of them. Probably. Ooh, that was decent. Damn. That's got to be a rest. That's that is a five pound trout. Five what is trout. Is it a big trout? Dang, like, so dude. It's a good one. It's oh. a red. Something a little different. Yeah, decent red. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Hell yeah, dude. We knew we were going to probably encounter one of these at some point in this trip, but it wasn't expected totally. Doing a little bit of trout fishing, got ourselves a nice little redfish. I'm going to get him unhooked. Yeah, like that. Awesome. There we go. 
nice beautiful little run man this lake's got everything like we were saying that there's just so much diversity in here like we're popping for trout and get a nice little redfish so cool dude these things get huge too i'm sure you've seen previous videos but this is a cute little one puts up a hell of a fight though on a spinning rod all right there's one of my favorite fish in the world red drum bye buddy That, that's a red, isn't it? Hang on. Get him again. Get him again. He's right there. He's right there. Get him again. Where's he at? Right there? Oh, oh yeah, I see him. Missed it. Don't stop. No way. <laughs> I f***ed that up so bad. My bad. It's a good one. I don't know if I'm going to land if this is freaking trout gear 101. <laughs> <laughs> Get a tag in here. That's a pretty one there. Look how fat he is, too. Yeah. Good belly on him. That sucks. Insane, he came oh, off. That was so insane. Oh <laughs> that was a redfish that just ate a freaking frog. <laughs> that was the sickest <laughs> eat of my entire life, dude. I'm not even mad about losing that because I just got to watch that. Spooked him? Bass ate it. <laughs> we'll take that. Oh, nice little bycatch. To think that like just moments ago we were snapping swim baits for speckled trout, caught some redfish, caught a flounder, largemouth in the salt, in the brackish. Such an awesome experience. Huge shout out to Ty and huge shout out to Austin for uh, for just taking us out fishing. Totally unexpected. We really didn't have today planned. The only thing we, we had in mind was of course to get into it. And I felt like we got into it today. What a diverse and unique fishery. I had never fished Pontchartrain Lake. I always, like I said, go down south, get out of the urban setting. But uh, we ended the day doing a bit of uh, push pulling around looking for redfish. I had an insane eat on the frog. Probably one of the craziest eats on the frog I think I've ever gotten. Wasn't even pissed that I lost the fish. It was just neat to see that redfish come up and just engulf that frog. Cannot ask for a better day number one here in New Orleans. I think we're gonna head on out of here and see if we can grab a, a bite to eat. We're winding down with some food. It has been such a, an awesome day. I like. I know I keep saying it, but like this has been fun. Like every time I come down here, I have fun. Whether we're uh, doing a little bit of fishing or we're on Bourbon Street, it's it's a good time. Louisiana is probably one of my favorite states, and I think it's very largely misunderstood. The people here. They're genuine, they're nice. It's like that Southern culture, it's, it's something about it. It's like it's very welcoming. Everyone we've talked to, like whether it be like a waiter, a waitress, like someone at a gas station, people we fish with, like, you know, Ty and Austin, like everyone's been super welcoming. The food's amazing, the fishing's freaking good with the exception of yesterday. I just wish we had more time here. We literally planned this trip four days, what is probably gonna be about two videos, uh, but hopefully, you know, packed in with a lot of content. Tomorrow's our last day and I think we're gonna go deep in the heart of New Orleans, see if you can find some interesting canals and fisheries, but tomorrow we might link up with Ty and, and get the day kicked off with some boat fishing content. We brought the boat all the way down here, barely even, we haven't even caught a fish off the boat. Natural thing that comes from Lake Pontchartrain, and it connects Lake Pontchartrain and Lake Bourne. Good morning, wieners. We are out here doing it again. This was uh, this is quite the little send to the spot. It's, it's weird because, 
from this angle, it looks like we're in a natural marsh, but then if you kind of turn around a little bit, you see, you know, you see a bridge. You can almost, where's the skyline at, is it? Behind, yeah. We're like, we're literally a stone's throw from New Orleans right now, uh, linking back up with Ty. It's been so kind and awesome to show us a, a little morning session, hopefully, try to get a nice redfish. It's, it's just nuts because just ripping through here, we go through this like huge lock and this huge like, what would, what is the correct term for that? It's like just a giant flood uh, wall, right? Yeah, just a giant flood wall. This is a project they started after Katrina. Obviously Katrina really hit this place hard and with that they built this basically great wall to stop future floods or hurricanes. It's just nuts to see because it just spans right through the marsh and all throughout here, even still, we're fishing like an urban spot. There's a lot of really awesome red fishing opportunities. You know, it's, I, I always thought you had to go so far south to Hope down De La Croix, but it's, it's right here. It's like really happened. So we're gonna spend the morning, see if you can spot a few tailing reds and uh, just get today started off on a bank. Great, I feel like too. I'm like, that'd be great. Like, it's fine, right? There we go. There we go. Dude, it fit it like a bass, like tapped it. Really? Yeah, that was insane. Just be acting all funky today. Shoot, dude. We are hooked up, man. Had to switch it up. We were coming out here to try to get some on top water. Had a couple follows. Just wasn't the answer, though. Oh, that's a decent one, man. This thing is putting this rod to the test. Whoo! There is no better fish to catch in shallow water than a redfish, man. He is grinding this rod right now. I know, he's beautiful. Oh my gosh, bro. My favorite fish on earth. And then they do this, then they go into the boat. Come here, boy. Come here, boy. Let's go, dude. <laughs> Where you want to and bite? Wow. That's probably why they didn't eat the frog. Look at that fish, man. So cool. No matter what size redfish are, they are fun. You can get literally a 12 inch redfish and it will create such an experience for any angler. That was our first fish of the day. I know it's deceiving. It may seem like we're in just a straight natural area, but this little uh, beautiful marsh is just adjacent to, how far away from New Orleans right now? Shoot, I mean, 10, a couple miles. A couple miles. 10 miles or yeah. so maybe, less than that even. And then you can go into the marsh, not only is it pretty here, but you, you can have an awesome time catching these reds. It's an area where you can go just a stone's throw from New Orleans and catch one of the coolest fish on earth, in my opinion. I love these guys so much. Caught them on a little, 3.8 inch swimmer. Gonna get him unhooked and send him back. Tagged. Good to go. All right. Thank you. What a way to start the morning, man. Back down she goes. If you happen to catch a fish, what are the tag? How do they know that it's your tag? So they'll have a number on it. Phone number. A phone number to call. It'll say matrixshad.com on it. Okay. And then you'll have a tag. You'll have an individual tag number, but you just call that phone number. That's awesome. Call that phone number. Let us know or text it. That works too. There's some good eating fish down here, but if we want to keep enjoying fisheries like this, especially so close to an area that's heavily populated and where they get a lot of pressure, the best way to keep this fishery alive, release them. You know, harvest one or two if you really want to, but put them back, man. Let those fish live, especially if they are tagged. If, if you keep a tagged fish, that's that's some that's some GG <laughs> for yeah, sure. That's, it's cool yeah. research, you know? It's it is. Easy, cheap research. We can see about where it moves, what it did, and why it did it. You yeah. know, just put a few back. Uh, this is what we're doing right now. Ty fish is down here, like you said, 12 months out of the year. Yeah. He's down here constantly. The bite changes. Like a certain month of the year, you can go after jacks. You can, you know, pop for uh, for speckled trout. There's largemouth in here. Like, you occasionally see a stingray hanging out with a gar, and then there's a catfish. You missed one? I just missed a little bass. Right on cue, bass, right next to where I caught a freaking redfish. But the cool thing about redfish is, I think it's probably one of the more popular fish down here, uh, but the cool thing about them is you can catch them a lot of different ways like you could largemouth. One of my favorite fish to catch, mainly because, oh, we're on, largemouth. There he is, that's so cool. Dude. Monster. This is 10 yards away from where we just caught the, the redfish. Swimmer. That's a that's a big one though, right? It's like Texas that's, four pounder, isn't it? Yeah, I mean that's probably your average size fish back here. You see a lot of like little local tourneys and all this time of year, especially in the spring, little afternoon tournaments during the week and all. You get five of them, you're probably gonna do pretty well. It's that's hilarious. Hard as that is to believe, but you gotta figure we're out here. These fish are living, you know, in the marsh and all. I'm gonna get him back real quick. A bass like that, he's competing with freaking redfish. Yep. He's competing with gar. The bull sharks in here in the summer. <laughs> That's crazy, Jacks bro. show up. I mean, 
It's, it's, it's probably a miracle that a bass grows to that size. That's what I'm saying. How it doesn't even make it. How did, it just goes to show like a bass are pretty resilient. Like that's Absolutely. what I think. When I saw a bass here, I'm like, oh, poor things. <laughs> they can't stand a chance against a redfish. Large. That was cool. <laughs> Little large mouth. So dope, man. The saucy is getting everything today. Second fish of the day. Nice little variety. Got a redfish and a largemouth. We're gonna head out of here in a little bit and uh, see if we can get some fish in New Orleans. There's tons of canals and ponds we need to explore before we leave in part ways with this beautiful place. Nice little bass. I will right, we'll see you later, LM Busy. Uh, these little guys, I imagine, are probably safe out here, dude. Like this is, this is bait to some to some big predators in this marsh. Pretty cool. Doing a little bit of jigging in the wind in between the locks. Nice little white bass. Actually, get an opportunity to. Thank you. Ty's over here setting us up for success. He uh, recommended a place for us to go catch a carp. It is tradition for casting concrete that we go end on a carp. We're in it. Welcome to New Orleans. We only have a couple hours today to really experience it before we head back to Texas. But we're in the city right now, here to grab some grub. I absolutely love New Orleans. I've been here so many times, and every time I come here, I feel like I eat at the same place, I get the same cuisine. We're switching up, we're changing up. We're actually gonna eat at a place called Mukbang. I've never been to this place before. It's like a Vietnamese seafood slash Louisiana Cajun joint. Sounds crazy, I love fusion stuff. Uh, hopefully it's good, it looks like it's got some sweet reviews. We're just like kind of on the outskirts of downtown New Orleans right now. So let's grab some food, get fueled up, and get back out in the water. We're in it right now. We're back on foot. We've abandoned the boat. It was fun fishing with Ty, and it was sad to say goodbye to him, but it's time to get back down to some serious casting concrete. We got a spot right now that Ty sent us uh, on Google Maps. He highly recommended this zone for a little bit of sight fishing. On the marsh, you've got tailing redfish, and over in these little urban canals, there's something else tailing, but it's not red. Let's see if we can uh, finish this series out on a bang. I'm excited, it's like 1 p.m. high sun. This is perfect for what we plan to do. Looks like there might be two. Look at that gar right here. We might eat. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, he tried. Dude, that would be insane. I feel like I've got a better shot at catching a car on this than I do. Freaking. Oh. Got him. <laughs> no way, dude. I got him. That was insane. That was so crazy. I don't know how long this thing's gonna stay on for. I don't know why he's not fighting at all. Like, doesn't even know he's hooked up. <laughs> that is so crazy, bro. He's not fighting at all, man. Usually these things can move. I don't think he knows he's hooked. Come here. There he goes. Starting to get a little more lively. We are hooked up. That took no time at all. That was probably one of the most uneventful little casts I think I've ever made on any fish. I literally just dipped it in front of this gar's face. Oh. Supercharged CRX. I literally just dipped the fly in front of this gar's face and he absolutely crushed it. He's not, fight he's not fighting that well though. It's kind of weird. I thought he was going to take off. Look at that little dude. Perfect in the corner of the mouth. I don't know how I'm going to get this guy up. Oh, what about right there? I'm going to have to walk this guy all the way down. <laughs> That's hilarious. All right, come here, little gar. 
That is so cool, dude. A new species we can add to the list, and we managed to finally catch an urban fish on the fly. We're gonna get a quick look on this guy. They are so wily to hold, especially when they're so little. They have pretty gnarly teeth in their mouth, so you can't lip them like a bass. You almost have to cradle him, and he's gone. Okay. Well, there you have it. Point in case, very difficult to hold. A first bite of the day in this spot. Let's see if we can get another. Carp right there. Oh. He's in a tough spot. It's like a redfish. There we go, got him, <laughs> got him, oh he spit it. <laughs> That's so cool, dude. It's just fun watching those gar eat. They're so hard to hook, but just the take and the initial hook set when they start head thrashing, it's pretty cool, man. All right, I'm gonna cheat a little bit. Got him, oh, big one too. That's not a small fish. That is not a small fish. Oh boy, oh boy, screaming drag, screaming drag. Oh no! Dude, that was, that was intense, man. I'm getting flashbacks from this morning after hooking that redfish. It's like the same, same way the redfish took off. Only instead of a swim bait, I'm throwing a piece of bread on a hook. Wow, I don't know how I lost that fish, but she just popped off. Took a nice fat run and gone. Oh my gosh. There we go, I just got eaten. He just ate it. Got him, got him, got him, got him. Let's go, baby. I just got eight. I watched that whole thing go down. Oh my gosh, this fish is moving. It might be a good carp, honestly. I don't know how big this thing is, but he is moving. Look at him peel drag. This is crazy. This thing's peeling drag like the redfish was earlier. Oh, he is so mad. This is so crazy, dude. Oh my gosh. This was so worth it. So worth it. Just stay on, old girl. Stay on, old girl. Oh my gosh, dude. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, let's go. <laughs> no, it's a carp. <laughs> oh, that is amazing, bro. That's a good carp. That's probably one of the bigger ones we saw in here. Man, they don't quit, dude. They do not quit. Come here, I'm gonna get at a low point so I can land him. This thing is not, not even close to being done yet. Woo! <laughs> First casting concrete, we ended with a buffalo carp. The second one, we caught a grass carp behind Holiday Inn. Now we're catching commons in traffic. There he goes, man. Oh, this thing is so fired up. Need to get him to that pipe. Wow, it's actually a decent one, dude. This is definitely one of the bigger ones we've seen. Wow. Such cool fish. I mean, say what you want about carp, call them trash fish, but look what this thing's doing in my rod. This is a seven foot bass rod and he is just hammering it down. You just want to hear the drag sing. These are great fish to chase after. That thing is big. Shoo. Carp. That is definitely one of the bigger ones we've seen here. Wow. What a cool fish, dude. Look how dark he is, man. They look different in here, dude. These Louisiana carp, they just be different. Yep, knew that was gonna happen. They have so much energy for like a, a fish that basically feeds on the bottom. Come here. Come here. Come here. All right, she's hooked pretty good. Not great, but pretty good. Come here. You're done. You're done. You're done. Come here. God, dude, that's a good fish. That's probably one of my bigger carp ever out of at least urban waters for sure. Okay, this is gonna be a little awkward, Caleb. Just bear with me. Look at that carp, dude. How freaking cool is that? This is an amazing way to cap off casting concrete, Louisiana. Thank you guys so much for watching this series. It has been so much fun. We've caught everything from speckled trout under the I-11 bridge to chasing after inner city bass all throughout some of these cities teeming full of life. I always advocate to get out there fish and you don't need to travel too far. There could be some awesome opportunities right in your back door. We're gonna send this guy back on his way. He's gonna be our final fish for this series. 
Thank you. Thank you. Back in the water she goes. Thank you, old girl, for playing. Wow, I don't know who's more white than me or her. Such a cool fish, dude. Almost looks like a, a big red in the shallows. There he goes. That was amazing. Put it there, Caleb. Boom. And with that, we conclude yet another chapter of casting concrete. Hopefully, through these past few videos, I've convinced you watching at home. There is no place a fish won't live. Whether you're chasing highway carp with bread, or maybe you're casting at redfish adjacent to Louisiana, get out there, wet a line, and make a cast. Now, before I say goodbye for good, I urge you to drop a comment down below. Let us know where we should film the next Casting Concrete and where we should visit to film another series. As always, wieners, thank you for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one. As always, folks, keep casting concrete. Never stop.